Welcome to EPG Paatshala. I am Professor Shushmita Basu Majumdar from the Department of Ancient Indian History and Culture, University of Calcutta. In the subject Indian Culture, we will be learning about Indian numismatics and the module is Satavahana Coins and Currency Systems. This module has been prepared by me and Smita Haldar. So let us learn about Satavahana coins and currency pattern. The Satavahanas ruled in the territory of Deccan in the early historic phase and beforehand it was Nilakantha Shastri who mentioned that after the Mauryas in Deccan the Satavahanas came to power but now the excavations have revealed that there was a pre-Satavahana phase in Deccan which was very distinct. So we have several smaller powers in Deccan who were ruling before the Satavahanas in the region of Dakshinapatha. So by Dakshinapatha we denote the territory which is to the south of the Vindhyas and it comes up to the far south region. So it's the region above far south that is the peninsular tip of South India and it's the region below the Vindhyas. So here the Satavahanas were ruling and the Satavahanas came to power in this early historic phase which in South India is demarcated as a period between 3rd century BCE to around 3rd century AD. As far as the Satavahana power is concerned, we find them also holding a region north of the Vindhyas, especially in the Narmada Valley, which included the ancient territories like Vidisha, Akara, Avanti, Tripuri and so on in the then Malwa. So other than Dakshinapatha, we also have these regions which are in Madhya Pradesh. Satavahanas emerged as one of the major powers in this early historic phase. They were an imperial power who had ruled over the regions from Madhya Pradesh to Karnataka and from Maharashtra to Andhra Pradesh. However, the territory was not a static one throughout their realm. So at times you find some regions which in which the locality powers were ruling and at times you find them under the Satavahana realm. So it's not a unanimous kind of a situation. They were contemporary of the Shakas who were another major power in Deccan. We often find a contestation between the Satavahanas and the Shakas in Deccan. So these are the two major powers of the then Deccan. They issued coins in large number and in several metals like silver, copper, lead and potin. Of these, maximum were in lead and potin. And these were basically base metal, though very significant base metal. The Satavahana polity has been designated or defined as a case of secondary state formation. Coins and currency system in Deccan during the realm of the Satavahanas is quite unique and interesting. Deccan had witnessed metallic currency since the times of the Mahajanapadas that is in the northern India. We find the 16 Mahajanapadas from 6th century BC onwards and out of these 16 Mahajanapadas we have the Asmaka Mahajanapada which was issuing coins and this was within the list of the 16 Janapadas. Apart from the Asmakas, we also have the Kuntala Janapada which was also issuing its coinage. Here you can see the coins from Y that is a region in Maharashtra which belonged to the Kuntala Janapada and very significantly these coins have a single punch on them and this is also known as the Y type coinage. With the rise of Magadha or particularly of the Mauryas, the subcontinent witnessed a centralized monetary system which declined with the Mauryas. Several local powers began to strike their own coinages, but the Mauryan silver punch mark coins continued to be the official currency for a long time, even after the downfall of the dynasty. In Deccan, 
often we find that the Mauryan punchmark coins continued to circulate even after the Mauryans. But a typical character of this region is that the Mauryan punch marks were imitated and we come to know about it because they were not minted with the punching technique rather they were made by using the casting technique. So we know that these are official imitations for meeting the demand of coinage but there was a very low supply because of the decline of the Mauryan power. Thus, during the post mauryan phase, local coins were in circulation in Deccan which were issued by the local authorities and these circulated in small pockets. Before the Satavahana occupation, the region witnessed primarily uninscribed and inscribed local punchmark coinage and die struck coins mainly of base metals like copper, lead and potent etc. These coins were minted for respective localities only, as we have seen in post Mauryan North India too, where coins were meant to be circulated within a geographical unit. So in Deccan we find the presence of several localities which were minting their own coinages. In later period, a number of localities which were under different Maharathi families like the Kuras of Brahmapuri, Sadakanas and Anandas of Banavasi, Hathis of Virapuram who were ruling in the Royal Sima area and the Sadars of Vardamanu became parts of the Satavahana territory. So you find firstly the presence of these localities and later on they have been consumed or annexed by the Satavahanas. The Satavahana currency pattern is quite complex one. We find a universal type issued by the Satavahana and this universal type is basically on the obverse it has an elephant and the name of the Satavahana ruler and on the reverse you can see a particular symbol which has four circles and a cross. So at the end of the cross you have four concentric circles and this is known as the Ujjain symbol. So this Ujjain symbol was the official or the royal symbol of the Satavahanas. So the universal coins or the imperial coins of the Satavahanas is a typical kind of a coin where you have elephant and Ujjain symbol type of coins and these circulated throughout the Satavahana territory. So once again let us just see what was the situation. So basic situation was that you have the presence of localities and small currency pockets wherein the locality coins were circulating and side by side in these localities and other territories which was under the Satavahanas you have an imperial pattern circulating or a universal pattern circulating which is the elephant to gen type coin and you have a typical kind of a currency situation where you have these two coins. So basically the universal or the imperial type was for larger transaction or long distance transaction which transcended the localities and the locality coins were only for the locality usage or day to day transaction and that is the only reason we get them in base metal. The coinage of the Satavahanas can be broadly divided into two groups, the locality region specific coinage and the imperial or the universal issues of the Satavahanas. In early phases, the Satavahanas copied and issued coins of the pre-Satavahana rulers of different parts in Deccan and South Madhya Pradesh. As and when the regions or the localities came under their control, they issued the local coin type adding their name and the royal symbol. And gradually the universal type was introduced in that region. So just to maintain the continuity in those localities, the Satavahanas imitated that particular coin type and then introduced their own coinage. Later the universal type was also introduced in these localities. 
Besides these pre satavahana prototypes of Tripuri, Vidisha, Vidarbha, Kotlingala, some other local coins have been reported which were probably introduced by the Satavahanas themselves. So you have the locality coins and you also have other locality coins introduced by the Satavahanas, not by the local rulers. So the Satavahanas maintain the currency pockets and introduce locality coins themselves. Among these issues, we have the coins of Nasik, Nivasapetan and other regions. And these were region specific and the region specificity of these coins is indicated by the use of particular symbols on these coins which are locality exclusive so these are not used by other localities so we can immediately identify such coins by identifying the symbols so the symbols are the identity of those localities coins issued in the name of Simuka Sri Satakarni, Satavahana, Hala are considered as early Satavahana coins. So we have two phases, an early phase and a later phase. So in the early phase, we have the coins of Simuka, Sri Satakarni, Satavahana and Hala. In the second phase, we have the coins in the name of Gautami Putra Satakarni, Vashishti Putra Pulumavi, Vashishti Putra Satakarni, Gautami Putra Yagya Satakarni, Vijaya Satakarni, Shivasri Pulumavi, Khadak Satakarni, etc. These are the later Satavahanas. So this is basically the second phase. There are a few coins of the Satavahana rulers which are not known from any other uh, sources. But they may be or may not be Satavahanas like Kochi Putra. On the coin of the Satavahanas, we find the use of the Gotra names. So these Gotras are basically the metronymic Gotras, which is a very typical character of once again this region of Tekken. So the Satavahana rulers are using the Gotras of their mothers. So Gautami Putra means he belonged to the Gautama Gotra. Vashishti Putra means he belonged to the Vashishta Gotra. So this is a unique feature of the Satavahana coinage. Gautami Putra Shiva Satakarni, a predecessor of Gautami Putra Satakarni, was one of the earliest members of this dynasty to issue such coins bearing the metronymic Gotra. Among the Gotras, two Gotras are very prominent. So these are the Gautama Gotra and the Vashishta Gotra. So these are the most prominent Gotras which have been used. Now, as far as the metals are concerned, silver coins of the Satavahanas include the coins bearing the elephant and Ujjain symbol, which is basically the universal or the imperial type. And also the portrait type coins can be included in this imperial type because these are basically the imperial coins of the Satavahana rulers wherein their portraits have been used. So in the universal type, we are keeping the elephant to gen symbol type which circulates throughout the Satavahana territory. Uh, also, we may include the portrait type coins in the imperial category because they have the portrait of the Satavahana rulers. They were also issued in silver. The base metal coinage mainly consists of the regio specific coinage and Along with this, we also have the ship type coins which the Satavahanas issued for the Eastern Territory. It is very strange that the Satavahanas who were a major power of the Western Deccan and used the Western coast and had the ports like Kalyan, Sopara and other ports under them. They were issuing ship type coins for the Eastern Territories and not for the Western Territories. Most of the ship type coins have been reported from the Eastern side of their territory. Now let us look at the issue of regio specificity or region specificity. Besides the above mentioned universal type, the Satavahanas issued several other types. These coins were basically region specific and circulated only in pockets as we have discussed. Each region issued its own type bearing the name of the Satavahana ruler 
which often was a continuity of the previous coinage already circulating in that region concerned. This feature of continuity suggests the occupation of the region by the Satavahanas or coming of the area under the influence of the Satavahana ruler. Thus, the coinage clearly suggests the transition or change of the reigning power in the localities. Even the numismatic evidences suggest the local chiefs sometimes shifted their allegiance to the Satavahanas and at other point of time they shifted their allegiance to the Shakas. So particularly when you look at the early historic site of Junar, you find that the coins of the Junar type were once issued by the Satavahanas and the same Junar symbol is also issued by the shakas and even you find a local ruler issuing the junar type so this actually shows that the region of junar was under a locality chief and he was shifting his allegiance once to the satamahanas and at other point of time to the shakas if we study the coins issued by the satavahanas a large number of coins could be identified as their local issues which are for circulation in specific localities among the region specific coins of the satavahanas the coins of the rulers of videsha were copied by the satavahanas this copy is basically the imitation of the type of the videsha which we have discussed in the pre-Satavahana coinage. So a typical feature of the Satavahana coinage is, as we have already discussed, the imitation of the current currency and issuance of coinage in the same pattern, same fabric, same shape, same metal, but only thing which is changed is the name of the ruler and also the royal symbol. So now the addition of the name of the Satavahana ruler and the royal symbol that is the Ujjain symbol has been added to the imitated type. This type was imitated by the Satavahanas at Vidisha and similar feature can be noticed on the coins of Vidarpa. Here we see the local rulers like Dhamabhadra, Kanhamitra, Dharmabhadra, Suryamitra who were issuing coins in the punching technique. Coins of Suryamitra from Vidarbha were restruck by Sri Satakarni. This is a very significant phase because on the basis of this we know how the pre-Satavahana phase at Vidarbha ended with the reign of Suryamitra and how this region was occupied from Suryamitra by Sri Satakarni. He belonged to the pre-Satavahana phase and from here the Satavahana took the charge of the region of Vidarbha. Pre-Satavahana coins of the locality of Tripuri are also very significant. On these coins you have a typical human figure which is the character of the coins of Tripuri. So these coins were locality coins of Tripuri and the, when the Satavahanas occupied the region of Tripuri from the locality chief, they imitated the coin type and the only difference was they changed the name of the ruler to Sri Sata who actually occupied this region. On the offers of these coins of Tripuri, you have the Brahmi legend and the language is Prakrit, the name of the ruler is mentioned as Sri Satasa and you have the Tripuri human figure on it. So this is the continuation of the type of Tripuri and on the reverse you obviously have the Satavahana symbol, that's the Ujjain symbol. When the Satavahanas issued coins for this region, after occupying the locality, they also have used the same motive for a smooth monetary transaction. Interestingly, the Satavahanas seem to issue coins with a new weight standard as their coins were considerably lighter than those of the Dattas. Now let us move to the territory of Malwa that is in Madhya Pradesh. From the lower and the upper Narmada valley that is the Malwa region, besides the local types, the universal Satavahana coinage which bears the elephant Ujjain devices have been reported in large number. However, the lower Narmada valley issued coins in square shape while the upper Narmada valley preferred the round shape coins. 
from Malwa, now let us move to the locality of Junar, which is very significant locality because the location of Junar is near the Nanegat Pass. So when we look at the Nanegat Pass, which is located very close to the Konkan coast, we find that the traders could move very easily to the locality of Junar. And that is why there was a contestation between the Shakas and the Satavahanas to occupy this particular territory of Junar. The Junar coins have a typical kind of a lion with manes. So here we find this is the identity of the locality of Junar. Junar was one of the most vibrant localities which has yielded several Satavahana coins. These include varied types including the so-called universal elephant Ujjain symbol type. The most significant numismatic evidence that comes from Junar region is a very important find from the Indian subcontinent is a coin of Naganika or Nayanika. Nayanika is the first female ruler or a co-ruler to have her name mentioned on the coins. So this is the first occurrence of the name of a woman on the coins and these coins are very interesting because in the center you have the name of Nayanika and outside you have the name of Sri Satakarni who is her husband and Nayanika or Naganika is also known from the Nanighat inscription or rather the Nanighat label inscription. So at Nanighat we have a statue gallery of which most of the figures are not surviving so the Figures actually are not surviving, only their feet are there and the label inscriptions. The label inscriptions help us to identify Naganika there and her husband Satakarni and father-in-law Simuka. So the scenario becomes very clear that Naganika would have been one of the daughters of the locality chiefs of this region and the name of this person would have been Thranakaira, whose name is known from one of the label inscriptions at Nanighat. So at Nanighat in the statue gallery, we have the Satavahana statues and along with that, we have the locality Maharathi, who is actually Thranakaira. So this is the situation of the broader territory of Junar Nanighat. Other types found from Junar are seated lion type, Lioness type, Sri Vatsa type, Abhishekha Lakshmi type. Specifically at Junar, we find the Junar lion type as already mentioned. Here you can see the figure of Junar lion which is very typical and just below the lion you have an undulating line which is like a river symbol and just above it is the three peaked hill symbol. So this is a typical device on the obverse of the Junar type coin and on the reverse you can see that there is the presence of the Ujjain symbol. So we are sure that this was issued by the Satavahanas. But on the coin to your right you have the similar lion but on the reverse you have the Shaharata symbol which was used by the dynasty Shaharata to which belong Nahapana. So you have a thunderbolt symbol and an arrow symbol which is on the reverse. So this reverse device immediately helps us to connect that the Junar type was also issued by the Shakas, the Western Shatrabs, that is the Shaharatas. So the same type is issued by the Satavahanas and also the Shaharatas, which shows that the locality chief at Junar was probably shifting his allegiance once to the Satavahanas and other point of time to the Shakas. Later, with the weakening of the power of both the dynasties, the local ruler of Junar also issued the coin type in his own name, and we get the name of Isimola from these coins. The standard which has been used on these coins, which is in front of the lion, actually is a derivative from the Vrishni standard type, and the Vrishni standard type is actually a box on which you have the standard which is stopped by 
half lion and half elephant the four part of the lion and four part of the elephant a composite animal motif on the standard so this degenerates to form a typical type of a symbol which has been used on these coins and which is placed in front of the Juna lion another important locality is Karhat so let us now move to the territory of Karhat or the locality of Karhat. The region principally yielded coins of the Maharatis bearing the symbols like swastika, tree in railing, dotted arched hill, damaru, river, etc. We have uninscribed coins of the same type bearing Ujjain symbol on the rivers, which suggests that the local chief accepted the sovereignty of the Satavahanas. The Gami Kumars also issued swastika type in Karhat region along with the standing lion without means on the rivers. The Kumaras of Karhat issued coins with lion and on the rivers bow and arrow. Sometimes the reverse device bears some more composite symbols like tree in railing, arched hills, bow and arrow, etc. The Maharatis and the Mahagamikas of Kundapur supported the Satavahanas while the Mahatalwars supported the Shakas. So now let us move to the Kundapur region where we find the Mahagamikas ruling and the Mahatalwaras also. The coins of Sopara bear the three arched tail with crescent along with the back legs and wavy line or the river symbol. The three arched hill with crescent is well known as the Mauryan symbol, but the Mauryan symbol has a crescent over it. The same symbol can be seen on the other Satavahana coins too. However, we do not have enough data to understand the process of continuation of the symbol on the Satavahana coins, but it seems that the symbol was in use in the western part of the country. South Maharashtra and North Karnataka region have two distinct early historic sites named Brahmapuri in Kolhapur and Vadagao Madhavpur near Belgaon, which yielded region specific coins of this region. The coins from the region suggest that there were more than one Maharati family. However, the boundary between the Maharati territories and the Satavahanas is not very certain. So we find the localities continuing and at the same time simultaneously the Satavahanas are also ruling and issuing their own coinages. When we move to the Kolhapur region, the scenario is very different because at Kolhapur we find the Kuras ruling and the Kuras are basically Maharatis and on their coins we have the bow and arrow which is the typical symbol of the Kura coinage. The Maharatis of Kolhapur region were basically the Kuras. Among the other Maharati coins, the predominant symbol was basically elephant. A large number of uninscribed coins have been honored from this region bearing bull on one side and Srivatsa on the reverse. Most of these coins bear a tree in railing or tree on arched hill which was probably the locality symbol. It is worth mentioning that the Kuras ceased to use the title Maharati and took the title Rayo. So here we have three phases. The Kuras who are basically Maharatis. So the Ratikas becoming Maharatis and issuing their coins. And then they are not using or not continuing with the Maharati title and only issuing coins with the title or the epithet Rayo or Rakyo. So the coins bearing the title Maharati were confined to the northern Karnataka only as far as their circulation is concerned. The point should be noted here that these Maharati coins were not imitated by the Satavahanas after the region was brought under their sway. So the Satavahanas directly issued their own type here. They did not imitate the Kura coin type which is very very significant. Now let us move to the southern Maharashtra and North Karnataka region. Localities of Virapuram, 
Satanikota and Adapur are the significant ones. The Rail Sima region displays three types of coins. Virapuram yielded the coins of Maharathi family bearing the name Hathi and also those of Mahatalwars bearing the region specific symbol of elephant. Both the families used same fabric with same motifs on their coins. The coins of Satani Kota bear Nandipada as the region specific symbol. We have some specimens with horse motive issued by the local rulers of Adapur, Kadappa district, Andhra Pradesh. The issuers have been identified by Shailendra Bhandare as Hirannakas. The Satavana phase in this region of Rayal Sima is not distinct and numismatic evidence is scanty to speculate at present. From here, let us move to the region of Banavasi. Particularly in southern Maharashtra and North Konkan region, we find the coins of Banavasi region which bear 8 arched hill or 6 arched hill and at times 10 arched hill tree and railing symbols on the offers and rivers respectively. These coins were issued by the local chiefs with name endings like Ananda. The rulers are named Chutukulananda, Moolananda, Shivalananda, etc. The Satavahana king Vashishti Putra Pulumavi issued coins imitating the coins of these local chiefs which clearly reflects the late occupation of this region. So when we talk about a pre-Satavahana phase and then the Satavahana phase, we are not very sure that till when this phase will continue. Actually the pre-Satavahana phase should continue till the Satavahanas occupy that region. So here in this case, we find a very distinct late phase which continues in the pre-Satavahana phase and the Satavahanas occupy it as late as Vashishti Putra Pulumavi's reign. So particularly in this region of Banavasi, we find that the pre-Satavahana phase continues up to a time period which is pre-Vashishti Putra Pulumavi's phase. Here the specimen of Mahashivalananda is quite significant. He not only uses metronymic gotra like Satavahanas, that is Vashishti Putra, but the presence of Ujjain symbol on the coin of Vashishti Putra Mahashivalananda suggests that the local chief was in alliance with the Satavahanas. The close resemblance of the coin with those of Vashishti Putra Sri Pulamavi suggests that these two rulers were close contemporary and according to Shailendra Bhandare, Pulumavi succeeded Mahashivalananda in this region of Banavasi. The case of Banavasi was somehow different as the presence of Hariti Putra Vinhukhada Chutukulananda Satakarni indicates a marriage alliance between the Anandas and the Satavahanas. So the case here is different from the others. So we have a locality wherein the Satavanas are having a matrimonial alliance with the local rulers of uh, that is the Anandas. Now let us move to the issue of the ship type coins to which I have already made a reference. On the Satavahana coins you find two types of ships. One is a double masted ship which is a long distance ship and it has been found on the coins of Yagya Satakarni. And there is another type of coin which has a fleet of ships. So once you have a large ship on the front and then several smaller ships which are very far. So somehow they are trying to depict a kind of a seascape here which is very significant. And all the ship type coins have been found from the eastern part of Tekken which is very significant. The ship type coins were issued by Vashishti Putra Pulumavi and Yagyasri Satakarni. They not only issued double masted ship which were long distance watercrafts. On one of the coins we have a fleet of ships as already discussed. You can see the coin to your right. Rest of the smaller ships are actually like a depiction of a busy coast where you have one ship standing and the others at the back. On the rivers, you have a very distinct Ujjain symbol. 
Now let us move to the portrait type coins of Satavahanas and Gautami Putra Satakarni did not issue any portrait type coins. So the portrait type coins were actually influence of the Shakas who were issuing portrait types and we know that Nahapan was issuing a portrait type coin and the Satavahanas were so much influenced by this Shaka type that they issued their own portrait. However, there is no resemblance with the Shakas at all and you find the uh, portrait of the Satavahana ruler themselves. And among the universal coin series, we should actually include these portrait type coins. They were issued in silver and six Satavahana rulers issued such portrait type coins. It is noteworthy that the language used on these coins is close to Dravidian dialect, which might be an indicator that it was mainly for the region of Andhra Pradesh. Portrait type coins of Vashishtiputra Pulumavi have been reported from Bhilsa, Indore, Hyderabad and other regions, which shows presence of this type in a larger spatial context. Since Vashishtiputra uh, two up sorry, I'll repeat. Huh? From Vashishtiputra's time to Vijay Satakarni's time, almost all the Satavahana rulers issued coins with their portraits. So we have considered this type as an imperial type and you can see every Satavahana ruler has been depicted in a different fashion. So it's their original portraits which have been used and the legend is also quite elaborate on these coins. Now let us come to the issue of restriking of the Shaka coinage. There was a prolonged Shaka Satavahana conflict to which I am not entering at the moment but we have very significant numismatic evidence which comes as an evidence of this Shaka Satavahana conflict. There are a large number of coins which have been reported from Jogal Thembi from a hoard. This hoard is called the Jogal Thembi hoard which has more than 13,000 coins and out of these 13,000 coins more than 9,000 coins were re-struck by the Satavahanas. So, we, these coins belong to the Shakas, these are silver coins of Nahapana which have been re-struck by the Satavahanas by their Ujjain symbol. So the Satavahanas were actually trying to depict that they have conquered the territory of the Shakas or they have defeated the Shakas and the coins being peripatetic in nature were kind of advertisement for showing how they have defeated the Shakas. So here you can see the portrait of Nahapana being distorted by the symbol that is the Ujjain symbol on the obverse and on the reverse, the depiction of multiple arched hill and a river symbol to your right. And to your right you have the coin of Nahapana which is an original coin from this hall. Gautami Putra did not issue any portrait type coin which also indicates that it was probably towards the end of his rule that the decision of re-striking these coins was taken. However, they were not put into circulation process because such coins have not been found from other regions or they have not been reported. So, the Jogal Thembi hoard was in the process of being re-struck and suddenly due to some unknown reason it was stopped so we do not find these coins in circulation rulers like pulumavi vashishtiputra satakarni vashishtiputra skanda satakarni and others are mentioned in the puranic list and they all issued portrait type coins the satavahanas who were one of the most important prominent powers in Deccan in early historic phase issued coins in abundance. The major trends in Satavahana numismatics as seen above are simultaneous striking of local and imperial or universal type. The first indigenous coin in the subcontinent bearing the name of a female member of the dynasty also makes this a unique feature of the coinage. The major indigenous powers to strike portrait type coins is also credited to the Satavahanas. The use of silver, copper, lead and potent make them the power that has issued the largest variety as far as the metal was concerned. 
The ship type coins of the Satavahanas are also unique as there are depictions of double masted ships and also the seascape on these issues which gives us an impression about their seafaring activities. It is the numismatic specimens of the Satavahanas which actually help us to understand the polity and the locality, locality nuclei relationship to a great extent. So this is how we have concluded the Satavahanas and I hope you have enjoyed learning about the Satavahana coinage with me and Smita. Thank you.